Hey guys, it's Dave Dean here. And uh, in this video, I'm kind of curious from you guys, maybe you don't have a DSP, maybe you're gonna upgrade to a better DSP. Uh, I'm kind of interested in on what your favorite brand is, what you like, put it in the comment section below. Um, in the last, well, I should say this month, I subscribed to a, a YouTube um, channel it's called CMA Connected, right? Uh, it used to be called something else before they changed their name. They don't get a ton of views or anything, and they have, like, excellent information on car audio, right? Um, so check them out, right? Uh, this this month, was their channel is kind of dedicated to DSPs. So they, ha they had all the experts... Um, on the car audio manufacturer products, basically talk about their DSPs, their new products that are coming out and their software, right? And so everybody was showing their software. Uh, and the, the cool thing about it is everybody's coming with upgraded software now. So, you know, they're, I would say Helix kind of set the bar, right? They set the bar way up here <laughs> and everybody else was kind of like down here. And now everybody's coming up, right? Uh, everybody's trying to make their DSPs as user-friendly as possible now. They're making it less time for when you go and take your vehicle in to get your uh, uh, car tuned, right? Um, and uh, they're just starting to make better products too as well, I would say, right? Um, more power is coming, right? More power with the DSP slash amps. And uh, just a better overall product. Um, not everything's golden <laughs> in that land. Um, it just depends on what brands you like, right? So the ones that the videos that I've watched so far, and kind of some of the research I've did on so far was like Hertz. They they're bringing out like a new DSP. They have uh, slightly new software, right? Um, obviously, we talked about Audison before. Um, they have the new software out. They have new DSPs and amps that have a little bit more power, right? Um, that's like their Forza line. Uh, the Hertz one, I think, I can't remember if it's something 8, DSP 8 or something like that, right? It's similar to what the other, the old one was uh, called. The old one was absolutely terrible. <laughs> I feel bad for anybody that actually had that DSP because it wasn't good whatsoever. Um, but the newer one looks like they made some improvements to it. Uh, probably kind of more similar to the Forza one, I would say. Um, so those are the first two videos I watched. I watched uh, a video on Museway. I don't know if a lot of you guys even heard that company's name before. I've heard about them, but I wasn't like, when I seen the product and I watched their demonstration, uh, it just seemed, seemed like the same old, same old. They, were, they weren't coming with anything new that you haven't already seen before, right? And uh, it just almost looked like a company that had somebody else make the product for them and then they put the stamp on it. There's nothing wrong with that. A lot of companies are like that if it's a good product, but there was nothing that like spec wise, I was just like, nah, whatever. There's nothing too exciting there uh, that I seen, right? Um, Alpines were, I started, okay, this like if, you know, I, I've always kind of liked some of the Alpine stuff over the years. Sometimes they're hit or hit or miss, depending on, you know, what years they're bringing out new products, right? The whole restyle thing, I wasn't a big fan of that. And they charged you a lot of money for some of those products. Uh, I've seen like three, 4,000 bucks for like a head unit. I mean, come on guys. And it wasn't really doing anything spectacular, I would say. Uh, if, you, if you own one of those, I'm not trying to bash them. I'm just saying like, they're, they way overcharged for some of those products. That's all I'm saying when it comes to that, right? Um, but that being said, and I don't know the prices on this, but they have like, uh, they talked about their new DSP slash amp, right? That's coming out. And uh, if I get some of these channels mixed up, it's because I watched so many different companies' presentations and... Uh, all, like almost all of them have a lot of different DSP channels built, like built into the DSPs, right? So they'll have like, uh, you know, for the Alpine one, for example, I think they said it's like four by 80 watts, 
for four of the channels at four ohms, right? And then four by 50 watts at four ohms. So it's not a lot of power. And to me, it's just like, well, uh, and I think it's a 12 channel DSP, right? So it lets you add other amplifiers to it to be uh, processed by the DSP. Uh, and almost all of them that are coming out are like that now, right? They'll give you like some amplified channels and then it'll let you add on, you know, four or six other channels uh, of DSP processing, even more on some of them. So that one, I really like the software layout that they did, uh, that they pre presented there. I really like the Alpine software. Um, I wasn't a big fan of the power. I would have rather it had the Alpine just had a standalone. So it's the status is what we're talking about, right? They, they talked about like some of their older DSPs, but I already knew about those products. Wasn't really interested in those. Um, I was interested in the status lineup one. That's the one I'm talking about right now. And uh, it would have been nice if they did would have did like, you know, 150 by two at four ohms and then 80 by two at four ohms and then 50 and 50. I would have been happy with that because then you could actually do a proper system with a, enough power, right? And then you just need a sub amp at that point in time. But 80 and 80 and 50 and 50, we've already seen that before. For And I know they're trying to always try to get it within a price range. And that's why they don't craze, go crazy. Like I'll talk about Moscone coming up because their amp DSP is like insane um, what they offer. But uh, for Alpine, I like really like the software. And you guys go check it out. Like I said, it's CMA Connected on YouTube search it and you'll see lots of good information that nobody seems to watch because <laughs> they don't they don't get any views whatsoever but they have excellent information because they actually have the head guys talking about their products right on there um maybe a lot of people just don't know about it that's all like i just stumbled upon it it just appeared in my feed one day and i was like i've been watching some of their stuff for probably the last year and a half so good information on there um most of the time on some of their videos not all of them but some of them do and so it's worth checking out. Uh, so back to the Alpine stuff. The cool thing with the DSP amp that you kind of already knew was going to happen, their new head unit that's coming out. Uh, instead of using the, the the DRC, like the controller, like kind of like the Helix, right? Um, they offer that to work with it. But you can use their brand new head unit that's coming out, the single DIN that's supposed to be, I think it's coming out like September or something. Um, you can use that with it too, right? So that that's kind of cool. We just got to wait and see what they're actually going to price these things at. Um, and depending on what the price is, it could either be like, you know, good or not so good, right? You just never know based on uh, um, what a company is going to price, price their stuff on, right? So after that, like the Hertz, Audison, Museway, and then Alpine. Uh, like I said, Alpine talked about their old DSPs too, but I was just like, whatever, I've they came out quite a few, you know, last year and then the year before that. So um, that's kind of what they showed and talked about for the most part was that new DSP amp that they're coming out with. And then they showed the software, which was cool. Uh, the next one that I've seen, um, I don't know if I talked about what this was the JL audio. Uh, their stuff was kind of like, they haven't, they didn't really bring anything new out for when it comes to like DSPs or anything. It would have been cool for JL to bring out like a standalone DSP. Would have been nice, right? Um, but they didn't. I would have liked to seen a, like a beefed up version of kind of what's in the VXI with like full 32 band EQ and parametric EQ, uh, like a graphic EQ, parametric EQ, just a full blown DSP would have been nice out of them, right? I think even the JL guys would have wanted that, right? Because the one thing people complained about, about the VXI amp slash DSPs was a not enough power, right? At four ohm. You have to end up bridging the channels and then you go from eight, eight channel DSP to six channel DSP, you know what I mean? So a lot of people, that's what they kind of complained about with that. So I would have liked to see out of JL and, we'll, and we're probably going to get it maybe next year, probably, or the year after a, a standalone DSP like a good, like we're talking top level DSP, right? And it would be nice to see some more just standalone amps as well that would go hand in hand with those uh, more powerful amps, right? So 
because they kind of declined in the power department with the VXIs. And uh, that's the only thing I wasn't a big fan of when it got uh, they're, Like they're decent. Don't get me wrong. It just would have been nicer to see like more power <laughs> coming out of those things than, than what they give you. So the, the most excited thing I, I liked about the JL stuff was their max tune. Unfortunately, it's like almost five grand in Canada to buy it. But that seems like, you know, the best of the best. That if you wanted to get the best tune in your vehicle, that would be something that you would use, right? Um, that thing pretty much does everything. And when I, as soon as I watched it, uh, because I was like, oh, wow, this thing's, this thing's extremely impressive, everything that it does. And then I go and search for their price and, I'm, and I see like almost five grand Canadian. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. If that, if that would have been about, you know, two grand or 2,500 bucks, I would have bought one. But five grand's getting up there for something that, you know, once you get your tune done or a few tunes done, you, chances are you're not going to use it. I mean, you can use it in anything, right? You can use it for, uh, uh, obviously, car audio. You can use it for your home audio system. It's like pro audio. You can use it for marine audio. You can use it for everything, right? But And it does anything you want something to do, that thing will do. Uh, and it'll do it extremely well. Um, so that, that I actually was more excited about that than anything else that they talked about, right? But they did improve their software a little bit. Um, check it out if you're a jail guy. Uh, uh, check it out and see what you think. But yeah, I would have liked to seen something new out of jail this year. But maybe maybe we'll get something next year. Uh, going on with who was next? So Moscone. Uh, you guys remember I was talking about the 430, the the, the class A slash AB amplifier, right? I was kind of excited about that one. And I was telling you guys they're going to be bringing out more stuff. And uh, so in this video, they talked about the 830, right? And the 830 has an aerospace, I believe it's a 12-channel DSP, built into this amplifier. So... The amplifier is four by 170, so the exact same thing as the uh, the 430, right? Exact same thing there, and then it's got another four channels at 80 watts, all at four ohms, with an aerospace DSP built into it. And I believe it's like it's either 12 or 14 channels. This one, I think it's 12 channels of DSP, uh, so you can add extra amps right? It has extra outputs to add extra amps that can be processed via the DSP. So for guys that like Moscone and it, and the chassis size is identical to the, the, the 530 amp and the 430 amp, which are the same size. Um, I don't know how they deal. I don't know how they did it fit everything in that chassis and having so much power, but that's what it is. Right. And, um, I mean, if I was just starting out, I mean, this thing, don't get me wrong. We don't, I don't know what the price is because it's not out, but it's going to be around that 45 to 5,000 Canadian mark because you already know just based on the prices of the other amps, what that's going to be, right? Um, probably like four grand, 4,500, probably more uh, than I'm talking Canadian dollars. Um, but you're getting a ton of power. I mean, you can do your whole system active there. You can have your three ways, your rear fill. Um, and then you just need a sub amp basically. Right. So you, you, that would be a nice two channel or two amp system with the DSP, right? Cause it's got the DSP built in and you're good to go. Software wise. I wasn't like a huge fan. They, they've simplified everything, right? They made it easier they added a lot of features to the Bisconis. um just in general i just didn't like like the, the kind of the colors and stuff they used but that's just whatever right um it it the the best thing about it is they kind of simplified kind of what the old software looked like now with the new software so they improved it they added more features they made it easier to use that's the main thing right um I just didn't like the kind of the colors that they had on there and stuff like that. It wasn't a clean look like Alpine or like the Helix, right? Where it's nice, clean looking uh, display. Um, 
I think you can make the screen any size you want. That was kind of a cool thing, but, uh, but it, it still was good over overall. Like I said, everybody's coming out swinging and they're trying to improve their software because that's, that's the main thing on the DSP honestly is like your software. You want to make it easier to tune a system. Everybody has kind of like their own automated thing that they use. You're never going to get a hundred percent using automated, um, systems, but they're going to give you a good tune. Um, most of the time, right? Um, obviously, if you want more than like 80 to 90% out of your system, you're going to have to go into more of an advanced um, level when it comes to DSP tuning, right? So the Moscone one, I, I liked, I didn't write, like I said, I didn't like really like the color scheme and stuff that they were using on the DSP, but that's like just nitpicking um, overall, in, incredible amp slash DSP class A class AB um, with a DSP with a t more power than anything else that's been shown to date right so I love that's the thing I like about Moscone they always come swinging with power they always give you a lot of power which I like right um, so we'll see what the price is on that guy but uh, that one I was kind of like I like that one I was kind of excited about that one Kind of, kind of excited about the Alpine because I kind of like the Alpine head unit. For me, I would never get it because I got this. But for other people out there that want like the old school, uh, you know, single din style looking uh, uh, unit, then, you know, before you had like the Sony that you could go with in the last like, you know, five, six years, that was probably, I guess, the go-to, right? Um, for people that want the traditional car audio looking um, thing. I've graduated. I moved on. <laughs> I'm on the M17. I don't. I don't really care about those products, but I still like reading about them and learning about the features and stuff like that. Uh, but to me, like you, you get those single dents. They're just too small. Like it's like this. Like I mean, if this has like your tracks and stuff like on it, you know what I mean. It's just it's gonna be too small. It's like the Zapco ones, right? Um, it's just kind of like too small to be reading, especially when you're driving. I like stuff that's big, that's easy accessible, so I can concentrate on driving and listening to the music, not going on something where I'm, you know, I don't have to make much of adjustments on here. I put my sub level pretty much around 13 or 14, and I always leave it as that, right? There, there's only a few songs that I come across where I might have to turn the sub level down, honestly. I got it at a good level. I don't have to touch it. So the only thing I'm doing is just grabbing the wheel and turning the volume. So, um, but that's almost like the, you know, they're a little, a little bit bigger maybe on those other things, but I mean, the screen, uh, is almost like the same size as what you'll see on those things. Right. And to me, it's just like they I loved them back in the day, but I'm not going back there. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like a, people like always have the nostalgia, you know what I mean? Like nostalgia when it comes to even like the old amps and stuff like that. But if you go put an old amp into your vehicle, um, as opposed to a new amp, try running that old amp for like more than four hours in like the temperature that it's been, I don't know, it's probably hot wherever you guys are too. Try running those old amps from back in the day now and see how many hours you're going to get out of it playing it. Like the, the amps, like in my system, I can go all day long, right? But before, back in the old days, you couldn't go all day long a lot of the time because your alternators weren't, well, unless you had a souped up alternator, and whatnot, you wouldn't get, you know, a lot of times if you're cranking it full tilt, you might get like four hours, maybe five hours out of it. If you're going full tilt all the way, um, unless you had an upgraded alternator back in the day, because back then you had like 60 amp alternators and stuff, uh, on some of the cars, right? It's because you didn't, you didn't have all this stuff in your vehicles back then. Right. Um, and now they, of course you have like, I think I've, uh, in my system, I have like 180 amp alternator, right? Um, so my, you know, back in the old days, your, your lights would be flashing <laughs> with the bass music, right? Um, and if your system's done up these days and you're in a dec decent vehicle that has a good alternator, uh, you don't really have to worry about that. I don't have anything in my vehicle, uh, fl like flashing, dimming or anything like that. Right. But that's kind of what, uh, to expect, um, 
you know, that nostalgia thing. Remember, oh my God, that thing sounded so great. And then if you really remember correctly, you're probably like, oh geez, it only lasted for like four or five hours and then it would die and then it'd have to cool down and then you could start it up and maybe only your speakers played for a little while and then the sub would eventually turn back on, right? Um, I've had many systems like that in the past. Uh, it was just because I never upgraded my alternator, right? I've coupled, I, I, I did things like adding a, an extra battery and stuff like that, but like old school back then. The caps, I remember everybody used to have caps and stuff back then too. And uh, they didn't really do a whole lot. But uh, uh, yeah, so the Moscone one, that that was pretty impressive. Uh, the Arc Audio, I think one was just yesterday or the day before. I haven't watched that one yet. Arc always makes great products. Um, the only thing I don't like, that I never really liked about the Arc, um, I never really liked the look of their amps. You know what I mean? Like their their SEs, I guess, were like the last generation of their amps. I never really liked the, you know, kind of like that rounded look that they had. I was just never a big fan of it. But I know their products sound really good, right? And that's the most important thing, I guess, at the end of the day. So I can't, I think it's like their new ones are called like what is like Nighthawk. And I forget the other one that they talked about. So I, I, was, I was briefly watched some of it but I haven't watched the whole thing, so I can't comment on the ARC audio stuff. Uh, but I do know that, like, with their stuff, their DSPs and that, they can chain them together. So say if you had one that's, like, 12 channels, you can bring another one that's 12 channels, and you can kind of link them together and use it all on one interface, I believe. So that's kind of like, the, and I think they're the only guys that do that or that can do that right now, right? So that's kind of a cool thing about ARC. But I don't want to talk too much about ARC until I actually watch that one. So maybe I'll do another video in a few weeks based on the second kind of half of the DSPs that I've uh, that I've seen so far. And then see, um, I still, still to this day, from what I've seen, I still think Helix, when it comes to like the DSP software side of things, I still think they're still number one over everybody, right? Um I like the Alpine. I like that they're kind of, you know, some of these companies are introducing new features where you can actually select the speakers. A lot of them, obviously, it's their brands, right, that you can pick. And then it'll set, like, you know, the crossovers and everything for you uh, on on that. Like, uh, I think Alpine does it. Um, I think the Moscone one does it too, right? If you got, like, uh, um, their Gladen speakers or whatnot, I think that's kind of included in there. And it'll kind of set up the... the what it thinks those crossovers should be at, right? So that's kind of nice, kind of a nice of a thing. Obviously, for people that, uh, you know, you're a little picky or whatever, you're going to want to go in and change things to however you want it, right? Um, but they at least it gives you like, and then, and then they're the experts, right? So they got it. This is what you should be using. So, I mean, for the most part, it should sound really good, if, if you're uh, picking the actual, that's if you got their whole system. So if you're a Moscone guy, you'd have to have the Gladen speakers. Um, if you want that part to play exactly how that is, right? Um, they have other ones where if you're, if you're picking, uh, if you have speakers from a man, other manufacturer, some of the ones, I think the Alpine one does too as well. I'm not 100% sure, but it looks like some of the companies out there that I've seen are kind of doing that too, where a screen will pop up and it'll show you like a, a mid bass, a mid and a tweeter, right? And then uh, um, some of them will do like the size of it, right? And then once you pick everything, then it'll set the crossovers for you on there. So that that's kind of a cool thing. So they're just trying to make everything easier for the end user when it comes to like setting up a DSP. So anyways, guys, if you stayed with this video this long, like I said, drop in the comment sections, kind of, Maybe you're looking at getting an, a DSP for the first time. Maybe you are uh, uh, you already have a DSP and you've upgraded or you want to upgrade. Let me know kind of what you're interested in. Um, and, you know, maybe you like other software better than you like the Helix. Let me know in the comments section because I'm, I'm kind of curious to see where everybody's at. All right, guys. So that's it for me. Turn this back on. Uh, that's it for me, and uh, we'll see you on the next one, which should be uh, a review uh, that'll be coming up soon. All right, guys, have a good one.